We thank God that as long as the earth remains, hallelujah, man can't shut it down. Uh, all the procrastinators and the prophets and the stargazers and the, all them. God said as long as the earth remains. Hallelujah. It's going to be seed time and harvest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So we don't have to worry about there's not going to be enough food and everybody on the planet going to be gone. Even when God dealt with the planet, everybody wasn't gone. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We give him glory this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Father. Hallelujah. Oh, Can we say the ultimate call of grace? The ultimate call of grace. If you can't finish it, come see me. Glory to God. If you can't finish it, we might all be in trouble. Because when one suffer, we all suffer. Hallelujah. The ultimate call of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grace is not nothing, nothing you say. It, it's more than what you say before you eat. Say your grace, boy. Amen. It's much, much more than that. And of course, we know it's unmerited favor, but that's a fundamental elementary introduction to the grace. It says not much about the grace of God. Amen. Doesn't say much about the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Don't say much about the spirit of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to go on. Yeah. Amen. Well, let's open the Holy Scriptures again together. I like saying holy because this is the only book that I know of that can teach you to be holy even as God is holy. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, Man. I believe we want to start with uh, verse 1. Okay, so much here, but let's trust God. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Let's see if we can start uh, uh, with verse 1. <laughs> it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one caught up to the third heaven, and I knew such a man. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Of such a one will I glory. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmity. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation, I want to stop right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Glory to God. 
Amen. Now the question is, what men are you blowing about? Okay. All right. All right. The one that heard things that are unspeakable, unlawful to speak on earth, or the one who was caught up to the third heavens, you know, uh, had all these things going on for him that men labor all their lives to get to. You see. But Paul said, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. See. Now the ultimate call of grace. Let me just refresh your memory. The ultimate call of grace, page 31, of seven aspects of God's grace. Amen. The ultimate call of grace is to make God's son look like the son in us. So it makes me say that I need to really be familiar with grace if I want God to accomplish his purpose. Uh -huh. Yeah, I need to be very, very familiar with grace. Because the moment I step away from grace, that's the moment I'm ste stepping away from God's ultimate call for grace. So I got to know grace real good. So uh, by revelation, because grace is so powerful and it's so uh, beyond human understanding and expectation uh, that it takes a revelation for us to understand it, you see. So the ultimate call of grace is to make God's son look like the son in us. Anything else, God's not working with. He's only working with grace. Amen. All right? So if, uh, if we've been encouraged, uh, we should meditate on the definition of grace until it's so crystal clear. Hallelujah. Praise his name. It should be crystal clear uh -huh. to every believer. I mean every one of them. We, we start teaching children the alphabets and all of these funny sounds, and we make them learn them. No, 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 that's a C. No, no. But we need to start out with them with grace. Amen. We need to put that, we need to be orientating them to grace as soon as they can articulate no. Okay. <laughs> See, the devil wants you to say, well, you know, teach them grace later on. We teach them everything, yeah, how to play video. But children are letting us know they're smarter than we think you are. You hand them your phone and see what they do with it. I'm not talking about 10 years old. I'm talking about 2 year old. They'll go to work and they know what. They don't watch you push that button. They know to put it up to their ear first. That's the first thing they know. Then they go to working with it. But the ultimate call of grace is to make God's son look like the son in us. Any ministry or message that does not have this objective view is called another gospel. All right. So as soon as we wake up, we should be looking for the grace of God and understand the definition of it with such clarity that we never, ever step out of the realm of grace. Our objective is to to be available to God so he can make the son look like the son in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's not what would Jesus do ministry. Amen. Okay. Now, he reads the scripture, I marvel that you are so, so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, I read this scripture uh, is that if people don't understand grace, they got some. Uh, they can't tell you the difference between the grace of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If they can't give you what it means that. to uh, know that Christ tasted death by the grace of God. If that don't mean nothing to him. Every believer should be able to explain that. You see. Then we might want to keep on stepping for a minute. 
Now, I think it's a tragedy that many believers don't meet grace-oriented believers early on in their ministry and in their service. It's a, it's a great travesty because they're left to another gospel. Uh, yeah. Young ministers like myself, we get so excited about serving God, we blow by grace. Mm -hmm. Say, give me the pulpit. I'll show you what I can do. You see. Mm -hmm. Now, all that is said and done in life and ministry should be should result in Christ being revealed and represented as He is. Now, in some cases, this is what we're going to work on this morning. In some cases. We may have difficulty determining how Christ is to be revealed, expressed, or properly represented. Okay. Now we're going to look at a case where God is trying to deal with a believer to help him get through this difficulty on how Christ is to be <laughs> represented or represented. Uh, how is Christ uh, uh, being uh, uh, worked out in him? Now, Paul said in verse 7, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation that was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Okay. Now, many believers, when they get the thorn in the flesh, uh, they have difficulty determining why it's there. All right. And, the, and the, um, they look for sin first, and rightly so. But it says here, um, all that is said and done in life and ministry should result in Christ being revealed and represented as he is. In some cases now, looking at Paul's case, we may have difficulty determining how Christ is to be revealed, expressed, or properly represented. Okay? okay? All right. Now, here's Paul. Now, Paul is saying, there was giving me a thorn in the flesh. A lot of saints are ashamed of having a thorn in the flesh because they think that they're the ultimate sinner. And, and if we're not grace-oriented, we'll automatically assume that somebody's in big trouble because we see this thorn in the flesh. So whenever you get a thorn in the flesh, uh, the first thing we should do is ask God, why is it there? And that's what Paul said. He called it the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now the difficulty factor comes in is that believers are not grace-oriented, many of us. And so when something comes into our life of such magnitude like uh, uh, Satan, listen, if I had Satan all the way around buffeting me, most believers would be like Job's three friends. Say, got to be something wrong with you, brother. Yeah, you, you, you done did something, you know. What is your problem, you know? And the believer is like Job. He don't know what his problem is. And we don't know exactly know what is God, how is God trying to accomplish his ultimate call in our life. And it's very difficult for young believers especially, but for graceless oriented believers it's even more difficult. Either they didn't pay attention to grace or they didn't have a grace oriented believer in their life to help them orientate themselves to grace so they can know what was going on, you see. Now, uh, what Paul did is what many of us should do, if not all of us. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Okay. Now, if I had the devil around me all the time, I would be trying to look like that ain't a devil. I'd be saying, no, that's not a devil. You see in there. I would be ashamed of it. Why every time you show up, the devil show up? Why is it you got this thorn in your side? What's going on with you? 
So I'm hiding and peeping and gliding and doing everything I can to keep the talent show up because I, I, I think it's, I, I don't want to face God and hear the, the judgment that he might say about me because I'm so sin conscious, you see. And so Paul, he labored with God. He asked him and asked him over and over and over, what is going on? Now, we get the story after Paul has been through. This is not him actually going through. This is his summarization after he went through. Okay? He said, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it, de that it might depart from me. Now, we got to be careful in the grace-orientated ministry what we ask God to take from us. We better check in with him first. You know what I mean? You better, we better go get before God and say, now, am I suffering for blessing or am I suffering for missing? You see? There's a level in a believer's life based upon the God's determination to make the son look like the son in him. That you have to go to another level in grace that most believers don't get to go to. Because we spend so much time suffering for messing. We, we never get out of the suffering for messing. And then we have a sin consciousness that is, is not balanced out by a grace consciousness. So that's why he says that... Uh, it says, um, we need, okay, it says, um, how was Christ presented to us by the Father? Now, how was Christ presented to Paul by the Father? We need only we present him in the same way in word and deed. What? Speak like Christ and do what he does? Apart from the call of grace, this is impossible. But by God's grace, I am not discouraged at all, knowing him as described in 2 Timothy, Okay. Uh, chapter 1, verse 9. Now, grace has very high demands, and rightly so. For no one can fulfill the call except for the God of all grace speaking and working in us. Amen. Okay, now. Amen. So now we see Paul. He's in a difficult situation here. He's a man of God, and the devil's around him all the time. You see. And the devil is on his flesh. And he knows what it is. You see, because God didn't show it to him. But he didn't show it to him after he talked to him. Before, he didn't know what was going on. He said, man, I need some help. This is not looking good. Everywhere I go, the devil's there. You see. And, he's, and of course, he's like many of us. He probably said, Lord, show me my sin. What is my issue? What is going on? I want to know what's going on. You know. And so this was God's answer. And he said unto me. Okay. You know, there comes a time where you have to make sure that God speaks to you so that when we explain to you why this thorn is in your flesh, you don't fall out. See, you need to have such, we need to have such an understanding that we've gone to God that when we come to believers to say, why is this thorn in my flesh? When we tell you why that thorn's in your flesh, because you're dealing with crucified believers and grace-oriented believers, they can explain it to you. But if you haven't besought the Lord about it, and then when we go to talking about it, you're going to be thinking we're the devil. Uh, uh, how can you say that that's a... That, that's a messenger of Satan on me. Unless you have a crucified leader or leaders or husbands or wives that has been dealt with by the cross and has been dealt with by grace and they understand the ultimate call of grace, then we're going to all suffer. You see. And so Paul had this because of the great call that God had upon his life, he had to up the level of grace that he needed. And the only way he was going to get this grace in his life that he needed, he had to keep him humble. You see. You give me a million dollars, then I show out. That's why a lot of believers don't have a million dollars yet. 
Because God knows if they give it to them because the abundance of money they have, they're going to go to boasting about that man. You see? But when God got through talking to Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. He said, this is a matter of grace. It's not a matter of personal sin. It's a matter of grace, Paul. You see? And we as leaders, as, as, as we come to the Lord, we have to make sure that we know God is always trying to make the sun look like the sun in us. But in some cases, it's difficult for us to determine it. Like Paul, it was a little difficult for him to figure it out. And a lot of times, it's a lot difficult for us to figure it out because we fear that it's some great sin that we don't want to really be exposed to. That's why you, God has placed... Uh, a crucified leaders in our lives. That's why God has placed grace-oriented leaders in our lives who understand my grace is sufficient ministry. Okay? It can interpret to you your case to help you come out of the difficulty of not knowing whether I, I'm, I'm being this thorn is there because of sin. Did I open some door to let the enemy in here? Or is this uh, here because of grace? You see? The best way I can explain it is that, you know, when you, when you run in high school track, your coach ain't really hard on you, okay? But then when you go to the Olympics, you need more grace. And he's there to give you more grace. He's going to watch what you eat, what you wear, how you work out. Your, your total life is going to be managed by that coach. And you're going to think he's being mean to you. He said, run 20 more times. Because everybody's up there running with you on it, with you running, you see. Everybody's running. It ain't high school. You were a superstar then. But where you going, everybody's throwing down, you see. And to get us to another level of grace, God has to put more pressure on us to help us to call out so he can pour more grace on our case, you see. Because he's trying to get us to another level in grace that we never had. Now, we overcome grace in the level of, of salvation, but God is trying to get us to another level so that we can understand the ultimate call of grace. Yeah. You got the primary call, but now he wants us to understand the ultimate call of grace. And the only way he's going to make the sun look like the sun is in us is by pouring grace on our case. Amen. You see? Because Christ was full of grace and truth. You see? So God's going to put us in some situation that we're going to have to come to him and then he's going to explain us grace on another level heretofore we never have experienced before. He said, now, you, you, you knew grace to preach it. You knew grace to teach it. But now I want you to know grace in a way that you were glory in your infirmities. See? That's why Paul said at the beginning, he said, listen, I'm not going to glory in that other man because God had explained it to him. He said, I'm going to glory in my infirmity. He said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul said, well, now you didn't, you didn't solve my problem. He said, this is easily resolved by asking the question. <laughs> How was Christ presented to us by the Father? You see, he was presented as one full of grace and truth. You see. Then he says, most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, it wasn't the issue about personal sin. It was the issue about an unchangeable, uh, constant, non-deniable power being upon the church, you see. And if you don't understand grace, we'll get it mixed up. We'll be ashamed that even that the word me and devil is close. We won't know what to do with that thorn in the flesh. And we'll run around, we'll try to fix it up, paint it up, you know what I mean? We'll make a song out of it. If you got a thorn like me, you ought to be pleased, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> We really want nobody to see that thorn because we, we don't want to be known as a loser believer. 
But what I'm saying to you this morning, that there's another level in grace that God has to put something in our lives constantly so that we will never, ever forget the lesson, uh, 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 not the glory uh, uh, and speak of things that are unlawful. See, sometimes believers like me, you know, God give you revelation and you speak out of turn. You don't speak it at the right time. Because you're glowing in that man that went up to the third heaven and heard things that are unspeakable for men to hear on earth. All right. And so to adjust me and, 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 uh, and balance me out, God have to put this thorn in my flesh to make sure I remember that don't you fool with that man. <laughs> You glory in your infirmity so that you'll have a constant flow of the power of God upon you. Amen. You glory in your infirmity. He said, most gladly, he says, uh, uh, therefore will I glory in my infirmity. Somebody's going to think something wrong with you. You see, you got that little limp and you glory in it. The, the, the children of Israel, they're still glorying in Jacob's limp. They don't eat the little sinew out of the animal where God touched his thigh. They still glory in that today. You see. And if we're going to go to another level in grace, we've got to be grace oriented so that we can know sometimes God put things in our life to make sure that we are weak enough so God's power can be made perfect in us. Because if, it wasn't, if he doesn't do that, once we come to this revelation, we're going to show out. You see? And God don't want us showing out. He wants us to always to have the power of Christ resting upon us. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's about a matter of grace, you see. Amen. Then he says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. In, you know, you get reproached by somebody and I fall out. I never think that God is trying to get grace to me. Can't take one reproach. We fall out. You see? In necessity. Oh, we don't want nobody to know we're in necessity. Ooh, we don't tell them. Such a brother don't tell them. Oh, God. Air conditioning been out six months. <laughs> See, now we have to do an assessment to make sure you're not being lazy or irresponsible. But there's a level of grace that we have to come to. I call it super grace status. Is where you're suffering that the power of Christ may always be upon you. Amen. You see. I see it. And, for the, and, 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 and to make Christ look like us, we've got to have that power on us all the time to make the Son look like us. You see, and apart from the call of grace, this is impossible. But by God's grace, see, you're not discouraged once God tells you what's going on. You see, when people say, ooh, we, you sinning, you, you need to straighten up. In necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. Now, that's what we have to makes it difficult. Is it for my sake or is it for Christ's sake? We get confused. We don't understand it. That's why we need more grace-oriented believers uh, and more crucified believers. I, I like the way when Watchman Nee met uh, Margaret Barber. You know, he, he always was coming back because God was trying to get more grace in his life, and he didn't understand it. I remember he was going to her one time saying, well, this brother is wrong. And she said, it doesn't matter whether he's wrong or not. He's your older brother. He said, fine. He went back and got an older brother that said that the, young, the brother younger than him was wrong. So he took him back. All right. He said, now, I got one that says it's older than him that says that he is wrong. And you know what she told him? She said, are you acting like a lamb? You see? And he said, the way she said it and the way she looked, he knew he was wrong, you see. Because it wasn't about who was right or wrong. It was about the grace that God was going to pour on his life, you see. And, and that we're partaking of today. And she said, are you acting like a lamb? And so he got up and left. He had to leave, you see. So many of us today... 
Uh, God is trying to let us know that it's about him trying to make the sun look like the sun in us. Don't get discouraged. If you can't sort it out, go pray. After praying, you still can't get it sorted out, pray again. And then come talk to a grace-oriented believer that God has dealt with. And a crucified believer that God has dealt with. See, a lot of believers, if they have not been dealt with by grace, they can't handle what need to be said to help them to get on the, uh, 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 the son looking at me ministry. You see. Because we can't say much to us. A grace-oriented believer that's already known and a crucified believer, he see you coming. They see you coming. But they can't say nothing to you. You're not grace-oriented. You're not crucified. And when we present the crucified answer, many of us are like the rich young ruler. I can't do that. You see, we'll walk away. And say, if the wonders of heaven would, would uh, uh, God wouldn't talk to nobody like that. See. So watch me knee, he didn't think Margaret Barber was being mean to him. You see. At the time he thought he was, but then God gave him a revelation uh -huh, in that moment. That it's about being a lamb so that the power of God can be upon you. You see. And we'll glory in our infirmities, and the congregation will know what's going on too. And no, God's just trying to give some more grace to you. You see. We, we'll, we'll understand what's going on. See, no, they're not trying to be mean to you. God's trying to give more grace in you. He's trying to get you the glory in your infirmity that the power of God will always rest upon you. The dove will find the place to land. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Glory to God. Well, beloved, I said as clear as I can. I had to labor extra eight minutes so my soul to say, you can rest now. In Jesus' name. Anybody want to know more about grace?